In this video, I will walk you through Pintos in terms of its how to debug it and get some uh, bearings on the flow. That is what happens on startup in Pintos. So let's um, let's re re review what we did before. So uh, we know that um, when we install Pintos, uh, we get a folder, let's say I put a folder called project3 and under project3 there are several subdirectories. Um, the subdirectories that I'm going to mainly focus on right now are user prog, which is what project3 is all about um, because we're implementing uh, the support for running user programs uh, and another folder called threads. Uh, this is where we will modify the thread control block um, which which is uh, what we call as PCB all along. Uh, it will be called thread control block from here onwards. It's in a file called thread.h. So the way our, um, our debug session is going to go along is we will have two terminals that we will open. And in one terminal, we will uh, launch launch Pintos uh, on the on the emulator. And in the second one terminal, this is terminal one. In terminal two, we will launch GDB. And what we will do. What we what will happen is once we launch Pintos here, uh, we will we will run it simply by doing a run test and the tests we want to run args none let's say, but now we will use a flag here which is a minus minus gdb, uh, and then what will happen as a result of this and I'm going to show you in the running system is is my left terminal here so i'm going to first make sure i'm in the user prog directory and and i'm going i've already done a make so the make is done so it's nothing to make and now i'm going to say run test args none with a minus minus gdb at this point, it's going to run, but it's going to hang. That is, it's going to run and pause. It's pausing so that you can connect to it. So uh, the KMU emulator is, is, is launched the operating system, but it's pausing because I put this minus GDB flag, it's going to pause. At this point, I'm going to open a second terminal and I'm going to run Pintos in GDB here. I say Pintos GDB and I'm going to run my uh, build slash kernel dot O is where the executable is. And again, I'm going to provide a flag here. And the flag here is going to be a minus minus TUI. This is just a, a flag so that I can um, I can use a graphical a terminal rather than a plain bare bones terminal. So let's do that. So I'm going to run here. I will run my Pintos GDB uh, with and the image that I want to debug and I'm going to run it with a minus TUI. At this point I have it have them both running but they're not talking to each other. So the act of talking to each other means that I have to attack connect to it and the connect to it is is the way uh, the way this works is when this is paused it's actually using a socket for communication there is a tcp ip socket that is being used um, it might it's you could have used to use unix domain sockets but it doesn't matter and so uh, what we're going to do inside our gdb prompt in the GDB prompt is is we're gonna connect, and we provided some uh, some 
uh, macros for doing this and the macro we're going to run is called debug pintos. So I go here and I'm going to run debug pintos. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to say debug pintos. And one of the things I'm going to do is it's connected, but I'm going to set a breakpoint in my main so that once I say continue, it's going to stop at my main. So I say continue and it pauses exactly as I expected at my main. So it's going to connect. It's going to make the connection. The debug pintos is going to make the connection and I'm going to pause at my, so there's our picture and let's go back here. Uh, just a second. So there's my picture and right now what has happened is I have paused at main and I can single step through this. So, so let's, let's do that. So I'm going to go back to my Linux and I'm going to single step. I'm going to do a uh, one step at a time. So I'm going to do a next, uh, which is going to pause and then it's going to keep going one step at a time. So now that we understand the basic, basic exchange, we can also set breakpoints that we in various files. Uh, one of the execute routines which you're going to spend a lot of time in is called process execute which is in a different file it's um, this one currently as you will notice is in the thread dot threads init dot c file um, so um, so that's what you see up here that is the thread init dot c but I'm going to set a breakpoint in process execute and process execute is going to be in in a different file so it knows that knows gdb knows it so it set a breakpoint so I'm going to say continue and now I can find myself in that in process execute and I can debug here for example I'm going to print what I received I received a a uh, pointer to a character uh, to a, st a, a string so i'm going to print it it says it's args none so let's let's go back here then and and let's understand what is the sequence of things that happen on startup um, this is this has more to do with an x86 um, startup and how it connects to as it pertains to Pintos. So the first thing that we see is uh, when we when we turn on our machine, there are three three stages you could think of. The first stage is the BIOS stage. The second stage is the boot loader stage. And the third stage is the kernel initialization phase so our first phase which is the bios phase uh, you can see that in a nutshell what happens is um, it's it, when we when we turn on our machine is the bios gets controlled the cpu initializes itself and then begins to execute an instruction at a fixed location uh, this is a fixed location what this does is um, the once once it begins to execute that instruction the instructions are supplied from rom and make the cpu jump into the bios the bios finds a boot device this is typically a disk and the first sector of the disk is loaded into memory uh, it actually loads it into a fix a particular location in memory um, that that allows us to uh, start executing. So it actually loads it into a location which is 0x00007c00. Not that it matters to us, but that's what happens. So this is where this is usually just 512 bytes. Turns out 512 bytes is too small. So 
what those what in our case will happen is uh, once we start executing this this is what the bootloader bootloader is so uh, this code that we got from the disk at sector at sector 0 is 512 bytes of data which gets executed so now the second stage starts and in the second stage we have the bootloader and what the bootloader does among other things is it's going to first uh, enable memory access beyond the first me one megabyte that's just a legacy historic thing that um, that is true with uh, with x86 uh, ask the bios for the pc's memory size uh, in our case that is going to be 64 megabytes because pintos doesn't pintos only works with 64 megabytes of memory creates a basic page table we'll talk about this basic page table in just a second this is uh, think of this page table as something that maps the os uh, uh, in physical memory We'll see what this means as we understand a little bit about virtual ed virtual memory later on uh, it turns on protected more so if you have a supervisor user mode and paging and loads the kernel from the disk so this kernel from the disk is at sector one uh, the kernel on the disk is at sector one and uh, which is actually the second sector of the disk uh, and it loads it to uh, physical into memory at 0x0010 zero 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 zero. and this is where our operating system uh, will be found this is our OS or our what we think of as the kernel and this location is where our main is. It's also the entry point. So once we get to the main, let's uh, look at the third step. So the kernel starts and the kernel entry point, as I said, is main and a bunch of things happen once I enter. These are the list of things. Oops. Uh, let me grab these. Let me write these steps out. Uh, the first step is uh, we will um, get the RAM size. which is for approximately four megabytes. Um, we clear the BSS, uh, we will learn about this later. Um, this pretty much if you if you track the code, that's really what's happening. Uh, actually, let's do that by going back to our picture here. Actually, let me undo this and go back to our picture here and we will see that this is the clear BSS that we just talked about. Okay, so we're gonna clear our BSS, get the RAM size. We initialize a bunch of subsystems. We initialize the thread subsystem. Uh, we initialize the devices, specifically the console to which we will be writing stuff. Uh, we will uh, devise the console and print a startup message. And you will see, for example, uh, the startup message that is showing up here uh, is a message that says loading kernel command line. And this is the startup message that you saw. Minus Q, minus F, extract, run, args, none. Uh, Pinto's booting with uh, 3,968 uh, bytes of ram which is what it found out there and then it um it does some 
the also initializes the mem system memory system uh, it will initialize the random number generator uh, the interrupts turns on the interrupts and um, then gets the thread scheduler going uh, the ske thread scheduler needs a timer so the timer interrupt is turned on and lastly it initializes the file system and we can actually see all these inside the main so let's go in here and I'm going to continue this and let it quit and let's uh, and it failed the check as we saw before so I'm going to open my process uh, my uh, threads in it dot C and uh, let me make it a little bigger Uh, so that's too big so we'll see here that our main program is a bunch of you will see right here that the main program is just a bunch of init calls BSS in it thread in it console in it it prints a message out um, palette these are all memory initialization um, segmentation initialization interrupt handlers uh, are console is also in included in here uh, the thread scheduler the file system scheduler and when it finishes all that this is the line where it actually runs the test case so this line here is where we are running the test case so let's uh, just copy this and so let's go back here so inside our main it completes the boot and this is the step where our test case is executed in other words our test case is simply uh, in our case the test case is an args none executable we run this executable and uh, this executable will 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 print uh, some output to console and we check the output it prints against this is the expected output so there's an expected output and this is the actual output this is the actual output and there's a little Perl script there's a Perl script that compares the two and checks if they're equal if they match then you pass yes then you pass if they don't you fail the test case so I hope this explains the basics of how you're going to uh, Get started with development and, and get your bearings in Pintos.